hi how are you doing welcome to this video and this channel and in this video i want us to discuss applications of differentiation inverse trigonometric and inverse hyperbolic function in the previous videos uh, we have discussed all method of differentiation and two more application of differentiation now how do we go about this maybe you should consider this to be a question we are told given y is equal to sine inverse x find the derivative of y with respect to x find the derivative of y with respect to x so what we do we will say y is equal to sine inverse x we are going to apply the cancellation equation for the trigonometric function if you apply sine on this side uh, on this side sine y then on the other side it will be sine sine inverse of x sine function cancels out the sine inverse function so we will now say sine y is equal to x so sine function cancels out the sine inverse function or simply x is equal to sine inverse sine inverse y uh, that much easier to differentiate to start differentiating from this point we now find the derivative since now x is a function of y if we define the derivative of x with respect to y, this will be equal to, if we differentiate sine function, if we differentiate sine function, we get the cosine, we get a cosine function. But we are supposed to get derivative of y with respect to x, not derivative of x with respect to y. So to get dy dx from dx dy, we just find the reciprocal, and uh, dx dy will be reciprocal of, 1 over dx dy, which is simply 1 over cosine of y. We just reciprocal that. 1 over cosine of y. So in short, dy dx is equal to 1 over cos y. But now we have a problem. We are supposed to give our answer in terms of variable x, not variable y. So we need to change this variable to be in terms of x but now remember our previous work in trigonometry but if you have not checked my trigonometry videos check them in the link shown here or in my video description here i've given the link to all mathematics topics now to change this into variable x recall from your trig trigonometry work cos squared y plus sine squared y is equal to one or cos squared y is equal to one minus uh, sine squared y meaning cos y is equal to the root of 1 minus sine squared sine squared y but from here sine y is equal to x sine y is equal to x meaning sine squared y is equal to x squared which gives us cos y cos y is equal to root of 1 minus x squared and therefore dy dx dy dx is equal to 1 over root of 1 minus x squared so that's how we find the value of dy dx so that is it that's how we go about that let us now find the derivative of sine cos inverse y not cos inverse y but cos inverse x so we can move this can move this let's try this one give enough y is equal to cos inverse x right derivative of y with respect to x that or just say y is equal to cos inverse x meaning if we apply the cancellation equation for cosine that is we find cosine cos we apply the cosine function on both sides cos inverse x so cos y cos function cancels out the cos, cos inverse function 
will give us simply x. Or x is equal to cosine of y. Now let us differentiate both sides with respect to x. Derivative of x with respect to y is equal to negative sine, negative sine y. But what we wanted to get at the end of the day is derivative of y with respect to x. Derivative of y with respect to x will be we receive equal this. It will be equal to 1 over derivative of x with respect to y, which is simply 1 over uh, negative uh, sine y. Negative sine y. Or simply dy dx is equal to negative 1 over sine. But recall from our trigonometry again, cos squared y plus sine squared y is equal to 1. Meaning sine squared y is equal to 1 minus cos squared y. Or sine y is equal to 1 minus cos squared y. And then you find the root. And again, if you come here, cos y is equal to x. Cos squared y is equal to x squared. Here. So we can say now sine y. Sine y is equal to uh, root of 1 minus x squared. Because cos squared y is x. So that now a derivative of y with respect to x is simply derivative of y with respect to x is equal to negative 1 over sine y which is equal to uh, 1 minus x 1 minus x squared so that's how we go about finding the derivative of cos cos inverse y so let us now move ahead, go ahead and find the derivative of tan inverse y. I don't know whether you have an idea of an identity that we can use when you are finding the derivative of tan inverse y. Think about that before we start. And also remember to like the video, uh, leave your question in terms of a comment, it really helps. You can also support the channel with more online watch time. Those believe beings are watching the videos online, the online watch time. Uh, the comments, uh, the likes, and sharing the videos. All these things they help in what they help in what we call SEO, search engine optimization. They help the video to be suggested to even more people, which makes the channel grow. So if you want to uh, support the channel. You can support the channel in uh, those ways, either some of them or all of them. It will, it will really be very helpful. Now let us move on, and I hope by now you have uh, you have an identity that we can use. So, given given y is equal to tan inverse x, find derivative or root find derivative of y with respect to x so find derivative of y with respect to x we know that here we are told y is equal to tan inverse x and what about we apply the a cancellation equation we can say tan y is equal to tan tan inverse x tan cancels out the tan inverse function so now tan y is equal to x or x is equal to tan y we need to differentiate both sides derivative of x with respect to y well now x is the dependent variable y is the dependent in this case that we have written it is equal what do you get when you differentiate tan y you get sex squared y at the end of the day we are supposed to get dy dx not dx dy so dy dx is the reciprocal of dx dy which we know will be 1 over sec, uh, sec squared y. But according to from your trigonometry, you know that sec squared y will be equal to 1 plus 
Turn, scroll. Right. You know that to go. But it's what I wanted you to uh, recall. So, obviously now, you are DX, but you know that turn, squared, turn X, not really turn Y. You have it here. Turn Y is equal to X. And turn squared Y is equal to X squared. So you say squared Y is equal to 1 plus X squared. Meaning now, Derivative of y with respect to x will be equal to 1 over 1 plus x squared. So that is it. That's how we go about finding those three. I'll show you how to find one hyperbolic function so that you don't make the video unnecessarily long. Then I'll leave you to go and attempt the rest. Now let us find, find given given y is equal to uh, one of the hyperbolic functions that we can use. Maybe you can use hyperbolic sine of x given y is equal to hyperbolic given y is equal to inverse hyperbolic sine of x. Find the derivative of y with respect to x. So how do we go about this? You can uh, now say solution y is equal to hyperbolic inverse hyperbolic sine of x. Apply cancellation equation for in this case it is hyperbolic sine of y is equal to hyperbolic sine of uh, inverse hyperbolic sine of x. So finally sine y shine y. Is how we pronounce that shine y is equal to x or x is equal to shine shine y. We now differentiate now because x is the dependent variable, y is the independent. Derivative of x with respect to y is equal to differentiate hyperbolic sine or shine y, it will be cosh y. With hyperbolic function, we don't have the change of sign. They, both of them remain positive when you differentiate them. And now we are expected to get dy dx, not dx dy. It will simply be reciprocal of this one. You have seen that several times. 1 over cosh, 1 over cosh y. From our hyperbolic functions, cosh squared y minus shine squared y is equal to 1. Or in short, cosh squared y is equal to 1 plus shine squared y. Let us get back here. But shine y is equal to x and shine or hyperbolic sine of y is equal to x squared. So that now cosh squared y is equal to 1 plus shine squared y or cosh squared y is equal to 1 plus x squared or cosh y y is equal to 1 root of 1 plus x 1 plus x squared so that finally derivative of y with respect to x is equal to derivative of y with respect to x is equal to 1 all over cosh y cosh y uh, which is 1 plus x squared so that is it suppose now we are given y is equal to maybe shine inverse um, 2x and you are told to get the derivative of y with respect to x. Of course, you continue working the way we are working, but whatever we are, whatever we were using x, we'll be using 2x. Or whatever we are having x squared, now we'll be having, instead of that, now we'll be working with 2x squared. From everything, every working, all working will remain the same. But whenever you are dealing, you are using x, you'll be using 2x. 
So having known how to derive this makes the everything else a lot easier. And always be consistent in your revision. Unless you have done this area, you just want to grasp the concept in a certain area. It's preferable you watch from video one. I usually organize my videos from lesson one, lesson two, lesson three, just the way you've been taught by any trainer. So I try to organize the, my videos to be similar to a physical classroom from the beginning of the concept to the end of the concept. So if you skip the videos you're watching from video one, then moving to video five, you really get lost. To make it easier for you to do your revision, use what we call playlist. Playlist. Playlist is the way videos are organized. Uh, from video one, lesson one, lesson two, up the very last lesson. So if you click on a playlist, you see videos organized as a playlist. So how do you get this playlist? See why you can see my photo on on my video. Click on that photo, then move to where you can see playlist. Select the playlist you want. This will be playlist for differentiation of calculus one. When you click on that playlist, you see the videos organized in that manner. So you can watch the first video, finish it, go to the next video, finish it, go to the third video, and so on, like that. That really makes YouTube to be a very effective tool for learning. Otherwise, if you watch video one, then video three, without two, the videos might confuse you, unless you have prior knowledge of calculus. If you have prior knowledge of calculus, you can directly go to the video you want. So that is it. Let us meet in our next video, but remember to share the video to other engineering students.